Welcome back to the channel everyone. We've got our fall happening here. It's gotten cold. Looks like we got a couple weeks of cooler weather now down in the 50s. It was 80 a couple days ago. It's raining today. I'm thinking about my projects coming up. I need to get inside where it's warmer. So you know we put this uh, used lift in here. Got it real cheap on mar Marketplace. It works out pretty good. I got a few more projects I want to do. But this garage is a small attached garage to the house. Two car bay. But it's small. I want to be able to work in here. And I have portable heat sources that I use. Which is electric. Little fan forced. You know, hot air. And I have propane. What I'm considering... And I think I'm going to go ahead and do is on this wall right here. It's just an old bench that was here previously when I moved here. I don't like it. It sags. It's about eight feet long and it's got two befores and it's sagging. Um, I don't use it much because it's always full of clutter. Let's get rid of this and let's put a wood stove in here. Now, if you follow the channel along, you know that I cut wood and recently... I did this outdoor wood storage shed. Right now I got about five or six face cords of firewood in there that's pretty dry. Pretty nice stuff. And we're up here located in the woods and we have plenty of firewood of, of our own. I don't need to purchase any. And uh, I want to be able to use that up. Instead of selling the wood, I might as well use it for heat. So if we start off and I want to place the uh, stove pipe, it would be smarter instead of going up through the roof, which uh, usually causes problems in the future, flashings and so on. On Marketplace, I purchased a new through-the-wall stove kit. I got a real good price on it. I paid about 25% the cost, so made it worthwhile. In this garage, we have two by fours, 16 inches on center. I don't know exactly what's behind that plywood. I've never taken it off or that pegboard was already here. Uh, I think we should remove that and go through the wall somewhere about right here. At the same time, if there's insulation in there, that would be great. I don't know why somebody would enclose that without insulating it. But if uh, if all goes well... I also on Marketplace found a wood stove that I'd like to install here. It needs a little bit of work, but the price is perfect. But if we ran through the wall kit out and up, you can see the slope of the roof is right here. I would only need approximately a three foot wall pipe, you know, a chimney pipe. And um, it would be two feet above the roof, which would be awesome. And uh, if I want to add another extension, I can. So let's take, clear this bench off, get this bench out of here. I probably won't destroy it. I might, uh, you know, move it to another location or cut it down smaller or donate it to Dawson or something so he can use it in his shed if he wants to. Um, but what I want to do is I got to have my air compressor somewhere in this location. I thought the wood stove over here and then I could use my roll around uh, wood storage, um, I don't know what you call it, just a container to hold your firewood. And I could bring it in from the building and park it here to, and uh, have it available. So let's start off by cleaning this mess out, moving this tools and equipment, tractor supply stuff, whatever's under here. We've got uh, some car batteries and some socket sets and things. Let's get this junk out of the way so that I can take off. Probably both of these pegboards and move them. I know this one for sure. And then that plywood's got to come off. And if there's insulation, that's great. If not, we have to buy insulation. From the outside, I would like the pipe to come out pretty close to that old light there that I don't use. I will probably take that off in there. And it'll come through with a thimble and then up. And so I think... I probably will, uh, I'll see the measurement on that to see if a three footer or if I need two three footers, but not too much in height right there. Let me show you the wood stove. This is a marketplace fine, it's a flat top. 
what I was interested in in this flat top is I can, you know, use it to boil sap off if I wanted to. I could throw a container on there, keep my coffee warm, whatever. Um, it's got this little deflector, there's a bent on the back. I don't care too much about it. It has a mounting for a blower. It doesn't have one on it currently. It's got a little bit of rust on it. And uh, the inside, it's got a glass door. Looks in good shape. This is an Aspen. If that means anything. We've got fire brick. A whole bunch of it. The inside doesn't look like it was overheated. It's nice and straight still. And it's... Uh, it's got a clean out on the bottom right here under these brick for your for your wood uh, ash, you know. The seal on the door looks good. The hinge works good. The handle's a little bit tight. Not too bad. And uh, I think we can just sand this up and throw a little bit of high heat black on there to be attractive looking stove. And I got room that I can slide a um, ash pan underneath there. For clean out, make it easy. So this is what I want to do, guys. Back inside here, I don't want to bore you with all my cleanup. I may put it on time lapse, but let me get all this stuff out of the way, regroup, get this uh, bench out of here, and uh, start disassembly of the walls. And this is a great time to insulate this garage. We got a, a heavy uh, 12 inch by six inch steel I beam in the ceiling. We got two by eight floor joists or ceiling joists. Everything's 16 on center. We've got two by four wall plywood on on the roof, plywood on the uh, side walls, cedar on the outside. I mean, it's good quality. We're sitting on a concrete block on the sill. But what I want to do is is get that installed. I want to put insulation in if there isn't any, and I want to. Uh, uh, put drywall on there probably plywood is good in the garage because you can put a nail anywhere but I don't want plywood directly behind the wood stove I do need a fireproofing wall so I may use uh, roof and steel and move it out or I may buy you know fireproof uh, cement board something like that we'll figure that out as we go Well, as you can see, I had enough stuff on that bench. It was built into place. The legs are different lengths here because they sat up on that wall. I've never seen this portion. I just pulled a few odds and ends out behind them cabinets, and I know there's a four-foot level behind there. These pegboards appear to be on with just some Phillips screws and... And, 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 I think it's plywood behind it. And I think what will happen here is uh, one of two things. I'll find out if there's insulation in there. By looking at the crack right here, it looks like there's fiberglass with a paper face on it. And if there is, there's no reason to take this plywood off. I would assume, you know what that spells, that they would insulate it all. Why would you go through the trouble of putting plywood on here, marking the stud locations and not doing that? Um... In that case, what I could do is just put drywall over it. And I just want a fireproof surface. And uh, probably two layers of 5 8 fire code around the wood stove area. Or the setback has to be 
I don't know, minimum two inches clearance from a combustible, that kind of thing. Plus, the stove itself has got some numbers on the back, like 12 inches from the wall, whatever. But I think I'll do a, a metal backing on it anyway, because... I always worry about fire. We want to put this in safe. We got to go by code. So the distances are important. I wanted to make sure, I got back up here. If you can hear it raining outside, it's a good day to do this. I got to move some more boxes of uh, tractor miscellaneous, looks like some belts equipment, and uh, got some jack stands, a couple car batteries that I tested earlier in there. They're good, so I don't want to get rid of them. Just get all this junk out of the way. That one pegboard has to come off because, you know, it's too close. So I can move that to another wall. This other one is probably okay. Um, I think I could put one over by the toolboxes over there, make it a little handier, but we'll, we'll come up with something. Or I can continue it to the floor, even though I think I'm going to back my firewood uh, cart up to that. We'll see how it goes. I still need a workbench in here, and on the uh, stairwell, there's a stairwell that goes down into the basement on the other side. Um, there's a flip-up countertop for bench, so I might just utilize that and put my vise back on that. So I'm wondering if I don't take this plywood off, if I just measure up and figure out where my thimble goes through the wall, and I cut my circle, follow the directions, what it says, I'll find out right away if there's insulation, and that would save a lot of labor. Uh, I can obviously see where the studs are, and it has to be centered with the stud. So it looks like the numbers are going to work out great. Okay, I was on Marketplace, and I found one of these through-the-wall thimble kits. And it looks like it's all there. Um, so I was excited about the find on that, because they're over $400, and I got a really good buy on it. So... Um, what I want to do is I went to Lowe's and grabbed me a three foot section of pipe. There's part of the thimble. I got out the brackets and things to see what's going to work. I showed you the stove. I marked out on the floor where I want to place the stove. It says I can have it four inches from the wall in the back. And I forget the number on the side, but it's going to, if I do the number on the side, it's going to move it way over. So I think what I want to do is do the drywall on the wall and then I want to space it out with some metal bushings and then use steel, either sheet metal steel or roofing steel. And what that's going to do is going to give me a reflector to reflect the heat back and a space for air gap behind the wall. I've done that in the past. That works out great. So what I need to do now is measure from something known like the window glass to the center of the studs. And find out where I want to go out through with the chimney and figure out the height. So I marked here at seven feet. That's a good spot to go out, and then I still got height up there above so that it doesn't overheat the ceiling. On the ceiling, I want to do insulation. That's two by eights. So I want to do insulation, probably R19, keep me an air gap for venting above it. And then I want to put drywall on it. So I'm not going to do the whole ceiling in here right now. I just want to do near the wood stove. So I may do this wall, this wall four feet, four feet, and then the ceiling four feet, just in the area of where the stove is for now. Once I get initial heat in here, that'd be a great project in the winter months to continue through here and get this all drywalled and insulated. And uh, so anyways, I can keep this little key box thing here. I can keep this light here. I can keep all this stuff here for now. I'll do my measurement from the glass to the center. I'll do my height from the bottom of the glass to the center that way my reference to the outside i'll know where it is and then this changes my initial height of one pipe i'm going to have to use two pipes because three feet will get me above the roof but i want to be at least two feet above the nearest roof so that i have a uh, no downdraft so that'll end up getting it about three and a half to four feet above the roof that'll work out great oh we got the tiger in here how you doing, buddy? <laughs> kind of chilly out today, huh? We got to get this project going. Okay, let's start off with a drawing. What I want to do is I want to have my wood stove 
a few inches from the wall. It doesn't matter at this point where. So say this is my wood stove. I wish the door was on, the handle was on the left, but it's on the right. That's just the way I have to deal with it. I don't think it's reversible. I'll check on that. Now if I do this sort of in a 3D, it shows that my 6 inch flue pipe is towards the rear. So I want to come straight out of that with a 24 inch black pipe. Okay, that's standard. Then I want to put this 6 inch damper in this. So I put a damper here. That'll control my air. Then I'll go with a second 2 foot. It's not going to quite be 2 foot. And then the 3D is setting off this way a little bit. So I think I'll put my elbow here. And it'll be a 90 degree elbow. Then I'm going to use a insulated six inch pipe through the wall and then I got a wall connector now this six inch is going to end up being 24 inches long so it'll be a six by 24 and then the wall is a two by four half inch plywood inside half inch plywood outside three quarter inch uh, tongue and groove cedar on the outside so we're gonna have about a seven inch wall I'm gonna do drywall on top of that and then I'm gonna do a spacer so I need somewhere about 19 to 20 inches I think 18 19 20 so I'm gonna use a 24 inch pipe and then right here is where the wall is gonna be so I'm gonna have this broken apart say that's a wall okay so in here is gonna be the collar and that's a two-piece collar and the outside diameter is 13 inch collar and the inside is about six and um, I gotta remember six and uh, I shouldn't say that let me measure it I think it's a seven and a half it doesn't really matter it's for your insulated pipe so it could be close to eight inches so this will be the uh, Outside it would look like that. Then this will fit through the wall. Insulation can be around it. Fiberglass insulation can be inside of it. Then this collar slides into it. Like that. And that'll match up to the wall. So now our insulated pipe would slide through this. And then I do high temperature caulk on both sides. And that way it's safe going through the wall. And then once we get outside, I should have done it different. I shouldn't have wrote right here. But once we get outside, it's going to go into the thimble. I don't know, I call it a thimble, but the T. And then we're going to have a T, a six inch T. It's going to have a support that comes back to the wall. Two of them to support this pipe. It's going to have a band right here. It's going to have a cap to enclose it a clean out. And then we're going to do a band. Better put a band here to band. And then we're going to go up above the roof line. So the roof would be this way, whatever. We're going to be a three foot pipe. We're going to have a band that locks them together. Do I have one here? Here's some that'll lock the pipes together. And then we're going to have a collar, this against the building to hold the pipe. That comes in that same kit. So it'll be a strap. I'll label this strap. And then another three foot pipe. And then we're going to have a, a cap. We got a nice cap that comes in this kit. And that'll look pretty sharp up there. That'll keep the rain out of our pipe. Then I can go outside and I can reach this almost from the ground to clean this out. So that'll work out good. And so I have to purchase a couple more little parts to finish this out. 
and uh, this is our design. So what we have to do now is we need to know this height, which I just figured, and this is going to be approximately 84 inches high, and then we need a 13 inch circle cut in the wall between the studs so it fits between a bay. I think the bays are going to be 14 and a half inches apart so it should perfectly fit in there. Hopefully there's no wiring or nothing. I don't think there is and uh, if there is we'll move it and um, that's what I'm going to work on now. I don't know if you can see that scribble or not. Come around here so you can see it better. That's our plan. So our 24 inch pipe see where we are here our 24 inch pipe here we're gonna drill and put in a damper a six inch damper we're gonna put it to another 24 inch another six inch elbow we're gonna do a insulated 24 inch pipe oh I forgot a piece there's a reducer connector right here so this will be a connection from black to stainless I have that that's in that kit and I don't see it handy but it's in that box and then uh, we're gonna go with our collar our two-piece collar through the wall 13 inch we're gonna build our support screw that to the wall with legs they're gonna go right into the studs so it's gonna be plenty strong it's not much weight anyway and then um, our band our T our cap underneath so we can unhook it. This is going to be part of this collar put installed in it. And then a band, a pipe, a pipe, a band, a t and a um, cap, and a strap. So that should be awesome system. And it should pass code just fine. So the first thing I want to do, again, is I measured from the outside. The light is over here. Right here you can see the wire going out to it. So everything should be fine. I check my height. I want it to be about seven feet from the floor. And seven feet is at the top of the pipe. And that's going to give me 18 inches from the ceiling, which should be fine. I don't want it so high that I'm concerned about the heat near the ceiling. And then yet I don't want to go over two pipes high. I don't want to see, you know, that extra material. So now the center of this, these joists, if they are marked correctly, is eight inches here, 16 on center. This is our center. Now, if the top of our pipe is here going out, our collar is going to be higher than that. So I still want to find the center of it. So that'd be like four and an eighth, four and a quarter. That would be our center to measure off from. Now, if we're talking a 30, 13 inch pipe here, that collar, I can take the collar, doesn't matter which side sets up here, doubt it. and then might be easier to measure this collar, which is 16 inches. So if I come up here and put it backwards at 16 inches, know that my pipe is going out at that point. Right there is my hole. Yeah, that'll line right up. And what I have to do, I'll put a mark across the top here. Which way? My pencil broke where my collar goes here and then I really want my circle made and know that it's going to be in two inches. It's not even though is it? No it's not. It's two inches on this side. It's only one and a half on this side. So this circle's off center. It doesn't matter that much just so it doesn't touch any framing member. And remeasure this to know that it's 13 and a quarter inches. Yeah, 13 and a quarter inches. 
and I have four and four. So I'm going to go back to my center again, which is eight. And we want 13 and a quarter. So half of 13 and a quarter. I'll go and even if I do 14, I put a mark as seven and seven. What I want to do is get a circle drawn on here. And neither one of these plates will work good. No. But I'll get a circle drawn on there and I'll start cutting that out. But what would make sense probably would be to find out the center of the hole, drill hole all the way out through. I can see there's fiberglass insulation in there. I'm hoping they did it all the way. Let me get out some tools. All right, I got a screw I just put in here. I didn't find like a bucket lid or nothing the right size, so I'm just gonna do a like the string method. So if you take like a string, you come out to your farthest point, and just follow your string around. If I can hold it steady enough. I'll put a mark on my string. This should make my 14 inch circle just fine, good enough, you know. And then it's gonna be covered with that plate. See that lines up. There's our 14 inch circle. That's good enough for that. I can cut this out with a jigsaw, but before I do that, to line it up even with the outside, I wanna take a long drill bit and drill through the center, through the outside siding. So that way I know they're centered with each other. And I'll use this same thing outside. So I'll get a long drill bit and drill through that any size. So now I just drilled out through and I got insulation on my bit. So I know it's insulated, but I can see it in here anyway, plus the staples. And I just want to cut that line out. And then we'll be in business. So I'll use a jigsaw on that. All right, the holes line up nice. It's nice having house sheathing that's an inch and a half thick. That pretty thick wall. There's a, I said half inch plywood on the exterior, but it's five eighths. And then there's 30 pound felt paper. And then there's Tyvek. And then there's a heavy three quarter inch cedar tongue and groove so that's pretty nice this would mount like this see how she fits pretty nice so now what I got to do is I got to have a level because this is on an angle 412 pitch I got to have a level this has pre-drilled holes, but I probably put more in it. And then I'll get some screws that are inch and a half or less. And then I'll put a bead of caulk or two beads of caulk at the top. And then I might use mastic sealing, sealant tape because that works great too. And then, because this will never get hot anyway. But that's pretty nice, guys. That's uh. A pretty good fit in there so I'll get out my material for that we'll go ahead and get this mounted I want to slide the inside piece in to make sure it fits over that one okay we got the hole done on both sides obviously I put silicone even though it's white nobody's gonna see it I put silicone and two beads across the top to join in and all the way around I want the letters to be straight, so I'm going to hand this in to my helper Dawson's in there. He's going to do the inside collar, and he's going to look at this to make sure it's centered in the opening. And I'm going to put a level on it and get it as good as I can. All right, if you could reach in there and kind of tell me if you like it. 
and I'm going to turn it till it's level. Okay. Let me turn. That's level right there. Do you like that? Yeah. And it's centered with the opening, right? Yeah. And I'm going to take roofing screws. They happen to be brown that I got. And screw that on there. It didn't move, right? No. And then I'm going to go around to the end when I'm done and put more caulking. And then I'm going to wipe off the mess and clean it. Okay, now you take your inside collar and slide it over there and see if it fits right over it. It should. Yeah. Fits right over it nicely, right? Yep. And so let me bring the camera up here to see that. How you doing, Dawson? Good. Say hi. Hi. See how that looks in there, guys? So that's going to be fireproof right there. And... It's going to be, you know, two inches plus from any combustible. Now I'm going to clean up the caulking and put more screws around the perimeter. All right, so I got that screwed on there. It's caulked with two rows of silicone at the top underneath and then uh, all the screws with gaskets around. Let's go on inside now. So now what I want to do is fix the insulation around. Make sure these line up really good. They look pretty good. And I want to check the insulation, make sure it's touching it. There's a, we tore out a couple pieces here. And this isn't, you know, inside the house, but it's still worth doing. Let's get the insulation back proper here. air seal it, you know. Get her tucked in good. And then I want to take the inside collar and set it up here. And I want to take the uh, insulated pipe and place it in here. And what that would do is it would center it, make sure it's centered fine, you know. Because this is slightly flexible anyway, but all right. And then we'll probably put a bead of silicone here, right around it, just one. And then we'll sandwich a plate on there. And I'll go get the pipe out. Okay. The collar fits good on the inside. It looks great. I'm not going to fasten it yet because what I want to do is go ahead and put a sheet of drywall up here to uh you know seal the wall then i want to slip the collar on all right i went out in the shed and this is out of that cull pack we bought there's one two three four five six a part of one i see two four six seven full sheets one broken sheet another sheet out there and then a purple board but these are five eights i don't need five eights in the entire garage it's not required the only thing it is is on the, the house wall, and that is 5 8. So this, I can use anything. I think by the stove, I'm going to use the 5 8, and I think I'll use one, two, three sheets here, two on the ceiling, and possibly four or five, finish them up over here. So I need to get this, the, the stupid-looking fixtures down. They were hanging up there, and I just plugged my lights in them. But I'm going to clean this wiring up. Um, they put an outlet there for, and then they got a wire that had a plug on the end. I just cut that off and that was plugged in. So I guess if you want that motion light thing outside to work, you got to plug it in. So I'm going to leave that wire in there and I'll either do something similar. I'm not sure how I want to deal with that. I don't know if I want to wire it live outside or if I want it at all. But I think if I just put my drywall up and cut a little hole in it, drill a hole in it, that'll be fine for now. I think I'm going to run about 45 over to here and seam it by the window. So I got to insulate that little piece up there. I'm not going to screw my collar on. I'll go ahead and put the drywall on and put my collar on. I'll take this pegboard down 
that stupid outlet thing up there and these hooks and stuff. I got to pick up some R19 to put in the ceiling. And, um, but for now, to build this chimney, I want to be able to uh, get this wall together. So I'll, st I'll finish taking some stuff down here. All right, I got my pegboards off. Got the little hooks out of the ceiling, got the lights down, got everything all cleaned up here. I got it swept just in this little area because the garage is full of crap. You know that. And uh, I don't have insulation for the ceiling. I didn't pick up anything for electrical. I think that if the wood stove goes in this corner, then I'm not going to want an outlet right there. I probably won't be plugging anything in right there. There is an outlet right there. It would be handy to have one on this side, but what I'm considering is instead of putting my circuits in the ceiling, in the walls, running, drilling, all that, maybe I'll do conduit or, you know, whatever, and do a couple outlets on the surface, like on the ceiling when it's done. Every time you put a hole in something, it's more cutting and it's more drilling. I don't want to drill the rafters, that kind of thing. So let's not monkey with any of that. I don't have insulation, just a little bit in the bag. So I think I can go ahead and put insulation in that bay. And um, that's all I have to do right now to be able to do this wall. What I'd like to do is uh, go ahead and put this wall on. Pull my, uh, you know, my thimble thing cover off. Put my wall on. I got to drill for that wire. And I might convert that into an outlet. That way I can uh, plug in a ceiling light from it or something. I'll figure out something what I want to do with that. I don't know yet. But anyways, I want to get that drywall on. I'll come over to this bay over here. Be 45 inches. We've got a 412 pitch. So what I do is I just measure down to an even point. And that's how I'll get my angle. All right, I got that wall done behind the stove. I got a little piece on the bottom to do because it's more than 96 inches. So I'll do that afterwards. Over here, I've got a couple. See the damage on this end of the sheets? That's going to work out great because this wall isn't a full 8 foot because we're up on a block. So I'm going to cut them out. And I'll put two sheets on here. And then I got to run down and get some more insulation so I can start on the insulation first before I do this. And probably maybe pick up a little more joint compound. And I got tape. I got nails. And I got screws. So uh, enough to get this project under motion. So I shuffled these around. And I'm going to use the damaged ones for on this wall. I'm going to go ahead and cut two of them put them up. I'm going to mark where my studs are. They did a good job putting stud locations and they happen to be right underneath the rafters which is good and then um i probably because they got the plate in this far i probably got to cover that with drywall too it's got to be covered so i'll probably end up cutting about a three inch strip and then screw that on so that it comes all the way in i don't know they cheapened out and didn't use a full width plate. They should probably need to put 2x10 on there. And then um, then I can drywall the face and down. And that way the total thing will be fireproof. I got two more sheets up I got to get like I said I got to measure and rip some uh, sill pieces to put on there and then cover them also and then I got one little strip to do over here 
But I'm at the end of the day today. I think I'm going to call this quits. I got to gather up some material. I used uh, ring shank drywall nails on the ceiling. I'll probably use screws. It draws up better. And then um, I got to get my chimney pipe. I got to pick up a couple materials. I got to get a couple rolls of insulation to get going here. And probably some joint compounds so I can seal this area off. And follow along in this little series. I'll, I want to get this wood stove hooked up. These are the necessary safety items to do first. Insulate. Make a fire barrier. And uh, so we got a, you know, a burn time if there ever was a fire. And like I said on this, I also want to, I'm going to think of how I want to do it, but I might use um, like a bushing and bring the, the metal out about an inch. And then I might use roof and steel on here and cover the complete area and, and um, you know, make sure it's going to be fireproof. Go all the way up the back wall, up this side wall, and then across the top. And it doesn't have to be on there totally, you know, whole mess of screws, but it has to be spaced out. So if the steel gets really hot, for example, if I left the, um, the damper open and, and the fire got super hot to where that pipe got red and I wasn't paying attention or I wasn't here, I went outside, whatever, I don't want this material to get so hot it could burn and I don't want the wood behind it but if you have a shield it's kind of like a um, a shield on your car like on your catalytic converter there's shields that, that isolate the pipe away from the body of the car those shields get hot but the air gap behind them next to the body the body is still kind of cool so that's the same idea here and what that's going to allow me is to get the wood stove over and back. And the wood stove is still going to be out from the wall, but I want it to fit in this little lot, and I want it to be able to be safe. If I run it wide open, want to burn the thing out, I don't want the wall catching on fire. So follow along in this little series. I'll see how much I can get done. It's a holiday weekend, but let's see if we can um, pick up a little more material and continue on. I'm going to wait for a sale. So when I buy the insulation and drywall, I get a little better price. Or it's possible if I buy it all at once, I get a little better price. But I'll check on that because we want to save money where we can. We definitely saved a bunch of money on this stuff because I didn't look it up yet. But after $15 a sheet, you know, I said I've got like eight sheets of this stuff. So it's going to definitely do this complete area where the wood stove is in fire code drywall. And um, the... To the wall kit, I think is 439 plus tax at Lowe's, and I got it for 100 bucks, uh, brand new in the box. A guy decided he wasn't going to do it, so I'm like, I'll do it. So 25% on that. I do have to buy some more pipes and parts, but I need them anyway. The wood stove, I paid 75 dollars for. The guy looked like he needed the money. I didn't argue with him. I said, okay, sounds good. And he goes, oh yeah, I forgot the fire brick, and he gave me. They look like 30 fire brick. That's quite a lot of them. And they're pretty expensive by themselves. That was $75 worth of fire brick he gave me. And so I picked up two cans of paint. I'm going to be sanding on that and paint it with high heat paint. And uh, on the drywall, it doesn't have to be painted, but I want to mud it. And I might throw a coat of paint on it prior to putting the steel on because you can't get to it later, you know. And I think up here where the pipe goes through... It's an insulated pipe going to be in this area. So I might just cut it, you know, the eight inches or whatever through that steel so that the pipe can slide on out through. I do want to run a bead of caulk around the pipe here and around the pipe outside so that it's sealed. And um, I'm kind of excited. This is going to help warm up the shop to let me do some projects this winter, possibly stay out here, and then my garage won't be such a mess. That's another excuse as I do not like the cold weather. And I don't like to handle metal and tools and things when it's cold out. So I think if I can get some heat in here and get this a little more pleasant, I'll be doing more projects in the winter and get more storage solutions, some shelving, some of my stuff put away and sorted. That would be great. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in a couple of days. I get another 
list of materials and, and start working on this. Thank you.